Artcentric Podcast with Rafi and Klee. Hola, you amazing artists. It's Rafi and Klee. And today we're going to talk about your art story. Hooray, story time. Yeah, and basically what we mean by that whenever we talk about story. The reason I wanted to put this podcast together is because a lot of times when, um, you know, on videos and stuff or when we're talking to somebody, it's much easier to do one-on-one and over-explain this whole concept of the artist's story than to just be like, yeah, you know, like... Tell your story Um, because in marketing, a lot of times they're like, you got to tell your story, da, 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 but they don't really explain what that is. And especially when it comes to being an artist, um, we have a fascinating and completely amazing story. But I think a lot of times people don't grip that because it's easy to live your life and think like, well, my life is boring. I'm such a snooze fest. What do I have to say? (laughs) Who wants to hear anything about my story? Like, especially when you're getting started and like you're going and you're doing these things and you're trying to sell your art and none of your art is selling. And so like you feel like you don't have a good story to tell and nothing could be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is that like if, if anybody here that is listening to this has heard about like Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey and all that stuff, as artists, us putting ourselves out there and facing fears, that's part of that epic story. And I'm, you know, that's that whole formula is the thing that is behind every great movie, every great game, every great situation where the hero needs to overcome the obstacles. That is what we are doing. We are the heroes of our own story. And I kind of want to touch a little bit more on that. And as always, we have our amazing rogues here with us who will put in their viewpoints, insight, um, questions, questions, stories, stories. So this is a great I love I love having these podcasts because this is like a collaboration with artists from all around the world Mm -hmm. where we just kind of sit and chat about a particular subject. And at this point, it's story. The importance of having not having a story because we all have a story. But the importance of being willing to share your story. So uh, one of the main things that I want to touch on when it comes to like that whole thing is the the idea behind the artwork. Right. Because in my mind, you have several stories going on. You have the story behind maybe a particular work of art or a song or something that you've created. And then you have the what would be called the overarching story. Yeah, for any of you that watch series, that you'll have the episodic narrative, the the one off, and the overarching plot. Yeah, like you have you have like the plot points, you know, the little plots in your story, which would be like the artwork, like those are the plots, and then you have your overarching mm-hmm. uh, hero's journey that happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Leslie said, "Yahoo!" made a live stream. Benefit of having a new pug puppy. Aww. Yay! Waking up early. Hope all goes well, fam. Yeah. Hi, Leslie. Cameron said, I struggled with this, but no one has the experiences I have, and those experiences shape how I do my art, and no one can share my story but me. Exactly, Cameron. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's the thing, like, the biggest struggle is the idea that we think that, like, our lives are humdrum, right? Because we're living them. We're living them day to day. We have some days that repeat, like, even if you're living the artist's life, like, you know, well, in the mornings we have our coffee, we sit on our front porch, we have conversation, and then we decide, like, are we going to get into the studio? Are we going to get into the media studio? What are we going to do? Are we going to go get groceries? We're almost out of groceries, like that kind of stuff. And you could live those experiences and feel like they're just a repetition and like nobody's going to find them interesting. But the thing is that the thi- the the most important thing is that we find things that we relate to interesting, And as humans, um, you know, I could sit here and tell a story of how, like, you know, we're we're out of groceries. So then we, like, pick and choose. That's when you start reaching for, like, the stuff that you somehow have in your pantry or in your refrigerator that you're like, I'm not sure how this got here, but it's all I have. And, you know, you end up making something with that. Or is that when you order out or something like that? And, you know... That sounds like a humdrum story, but there's going to be a billion people out there that relate to you when you're telling that story. Mm -hmm. And the thing that people relate to when they're not artists, right? Artists will relate to your artistic story no matter what. But the thing that people relate to is the overarching meaning behind that story. As an artist, like you are taking a chance on your dreams 
and putting yourself out there. And for a lot of people, they relate to that in a way where it's like, this is what I wish I could do. You're so brave. I wish I could do this. But also they get inspired by your story. They mm-hmm. get inspired by your story. Not only in pursuing your dreams, but also as an artist, you're actively pursuing self-exploration, which is something that I feel like most people probably wish they had more time or dedicated time for. Yeah. Yeah, and self-exploration is part of that story because with every obstacle that you run into, with every roadblock, with every insecurity, with every little piece of doubt that you might have, you know, you're growing. You're facing that experience head on. And I could tell you from my own experience in my life that a lot of times, you know, when you're just living a regular life, it's almost like you're taught to avoid that. Like, you know, like you don't have time for that. You don't have time. You don't have time to like face, you know, your your the infinite onion that is you and like deeper layers and stuff like that. And for the most part, a lot of people live very surface level. Like I do this. This is what I do. Uh, My title of my job is me. It's who I am. What do you do? I'm a manager. What are you? I'm a manager, you know, like that kind of thing. And when it comes to being an artist, like it is it is a struggle. And so we have to really, really dig deep sometimes to keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Clover said, I set out to romance my life every day. Every day can be magical if you add magic to it. That's beautiful. That's amazing. And I love that Mm -hmm. because that is exactly the whole sense of the story. Like for Clee and I, there is this idea, you know, like I'll wake up in the morning and there are many times that I think to myself, like, what adventure are we going on today? And that doesn't mean that we're leaving the house or anything like that. It might be we might be doing groceries that day, doing a grocery run and then getting into studio or, or figuring out financials or something. But really, it's like, what is the thing that I'm going to learn about myself today? And that that kind of stuff excites me, you know, and it doesn't mean that it's all like uh, unicorn farts and rainbows. It Oftentimes, it's like, what is the challenge that I am going to overcome exactly. or take a step toward overcoming? Clover said... Also, my favorite story to tell is how I started in a 200 square foot studio with one other person and two dogs and how I think anyone can do it if they put their mind to it. Yes, Clover. Exactly. I love that. that I love that aspect of my story, too. You know, we joke around about Dirt Pit Studios. Right. Um, because we were in Pensacola. We were happy, helping my dad uh, after his open heart surgery. And my dad is a hoarder, right? So, like, he just he's got stuff there was one day that i got into an argument with him because he had a like a 1980s printer one of those really old printers and i went to go throw it away because i was like you can't do anything with this it doesn't even work with our current technology and he fought me on it like no you can't throw that away and i'm so like the studio basically started in a small corner of a garage where i was able to um clear off an air clean clean up an area and put a foldable table there And then outside of the garage, there was like this piece of this wooden bench with like a dirt pit underneath it. And like that's basically where the studio started Um, out in the heat, the Florida heat and in the dirt. And I'm very proud of that. That sounds like the beginning of a song (laughs) out in the heat, the Florida heat and in the dirt. That's where it began. That's where it began. <laughs> Clover said, you aren't getting groceries. You are gathering supplies. For a fantastic feast. Exactly. I it's love true. it. I love it. Um, Cameron said, people live their own creative minds through what we do, regardless of what medium we use. The creative minds crave being used, whether they know it or not. Oh, absolutely. Agreed. I think one of the hurdles, well, something that I've heard artists say, and I actually fell prey to this in the beginning, is either A, well, I don't know what my story is, and B, like, it feels too big. Like, how do I summarize who I am into a story? Like, sometimes it feels big, and we feel like we have to tell this whole epic tale, like, all in one shot. And what I realized later on was, like, no, 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 you don't even have to figure out what your story is because it's literally unfolding right now. It's happening every day, so you're just... You're not telling a story from beginning to end, but you are sharing bits and pieces as they're happening in real time. And that's the thing. The moment that you decide that you're going to do anything, that's the beginning of the story. You know, Mm -hmm. like when I when I think about it, I'm like, 
the beginning of my story started um, years ago, right? So you've got like the the before, the before part, right? The before times. The before times, right? So I can write a story of, you know, so I insert those as like flashbacks, you know, like, well, I remember when I very first wanted to put my artwork out there, but I was too afraid to blah, blah, blah. But the actual story started the day that I decided to show my art and couldn't find anywhere to show my art because we were relatively new to the area. I'd never displayed my art before. So there was no galleries, no galleries were going to take us seriously. And so we looked around and decided like, okay, this is an op- obviously all we got to do at a flea market is put a table, you know, rent a table and we could start showing our art. That was absolutely terrifying to just even take that step. Mm-hmm. But like, that's the beginning of the story. Right. And then, yes, the over the last decade, we've experienced all this stuff, but the story's not over. Like we are still learning things day to day and running into roadblocks and all kinds of things. And your story just keeps getting more epic as you go, as you persist through this thing, which is why I say like persist through the suck, because you're just adding to your story and gaining and leveling up and gaining experience points. And exactly. you'll have an infinite number of micro stories inside of your narrative. This morning I had an aha moment and I was like, oh, I've just begun like a new chapter. I'm on the precipice of something and I'm just beginning. Yeah. And that's exciting for me. However big or minuscule you want to make it, which is entirely up to you. Another thing I think is like um, we've met a lot of people that they don't want to share their story when they're still in the beginning stages. Like it's like this this pervasive idea that you have to achieve some level of mastery before you start sharing the journey. Like, well, nobody wants to hear about how I can't figure this X, Y and Z out or how I don't know this or whatever. I'm just an amateur. So what do I have to share? But it's what I have found is that. Like, that's the stuff that people really resonate with. Of course, they're going to celebrate your victories with you. But in the whole person approach, which we've talked about a lot, it's not just the triumphs and the level ups. It's all of it. It's the I don't I can't figure this out or I'm struggling with this, but I'm going in this direction and I'm trying. I'm experimenting with this and I don't know how it's going to go. That's all all this stuff. I mean, can you imagine like you're sitting there with someone and you're having a conversation and they're like, yeah, you know, like. 10 years ago, I decided to become an artist and a, you know, a gallery accepted me. I didn't even approach them. They just approached me. And as soon as I put my artwork in there, it just sold. And, you know, I've been just kind of creating artwork. And every time I create something, it sells. It's been like that for the last 10 years. I haven't really run into any like roadblocks or anything like that. I mean, there's zero, there's nothing inspiring about that story. Like nothing inspiring other than the fact that, okay, well, maybe that's a possibility. But that's kind of how the the art world or just about any kind of like dream world works, right? Like with musicians and stuff, you constantly hear the story of like the overnight success, which is a myth. There is no such thing. The amount of work and putting themselves out there that goes into somebody becoming an overnight success, right? Where that's what everybody, oh, this person just came out of the woodwork and they don't know anything about them having put themselves out there for 20 years before that, where they they were an unknown, like those kind of stories, like the, the, the success part actually doesn't inspire me. What, in, what inspires me is the 20 years that they spent getting there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To, to that overnight success. That's the thing that I'm really inspired by. How did they keep going? Wow, this is what they had to face. Wow, they were getting rejected left and right. Wow, and they just kept going. That, that is so inspirational to me. And I think a lot of people, yeah, they want to get their, they want to do the highlight reel. You want to right. do the highlight reel. That's that's the popular thing on on social media. It's like, just show all your triumphs and stuff. And I think the one part that a lot of people have a hard time with, because the other comment that we get when we talk about sharing your story is that there's a lot of, first off, there's a lot of people out there that um, will be like, I don't want to share my story, I just want to sell my art. And I'm like, that's fine. But you obviously don't understand why art sells in the first place. Art is all story. Yeah, it's all story. And the other part that they'll say is like, well, I don't want to like just share my my dirty laundry. 
you know, I don't want people to know me. Like, I'm afraid of people knowing. And I'm like, you can tell your story without explaining, like, what kind of poo you took this morning. Like, you know, like, you don't have to give, like, Definitely. detail. Like, this morning I had a giant snot in my nose and check this out. You know, like... You or, did, like, my mom and I fought. My mom and I <laughs> fought because, like, she doesn't get me. I mean, unless it's relevant to a different part of your story. Right, and I painted about it or something. It's sometimes such a micro difference that you almost wouldn't notice. But, like, my last post of the Firefly ring that I just completed... That was my first time ever successfully flush setting a stone. So I didn't say, look at this beautiful masterpiece at the end. <laughs> right. I could have because I was really proud of it. It was a success. But I chose to say, um, I am trying to learn how to do this. I am trying to build my flush setting skills. <laughs> this is really cool. I'm very excited about it. This is cool. Um, uh, you know how many times I screwed this up beforehand, you know, and those are the things that inspire me. It's like, I want to see, I want to see the success, but knowing that they battled right with, with you earned it, you earned it. <laughs> and for an artist who is committed to being like a forever amateur, always learning, never done. Um, it's necessary to embrace and share the learning experience. Otherwise, like if there's never an end to the journey, and you're waiting for some level of mastery before you start sharing. Those two things don't you're really go together. Get there. You're never going to get there. <laughs> yeah. The fact of the matter is that there's a lot of like experts out there, right? People love calling themselves experts um, because it gives you the, there's something about the human brain that when somebody presents themselves as an expert and they lay out their accolades to people and they're like, this is what I've done. This is my experience for blah, 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 blah. I am an expert in this area. Um, it's it's a known fact. They've done studies on this that parts of the human, like we shut down, like our brain shuts down and we just kind of listen because we're like this person. We go into expert. sponge mode. Yeah, we go into sponge mode. Activate sponge And mode. the truth of the matter is that there are people out there that have maybe a little bit more experience in an area or something like that. But as far as like saying like I am an expert, we've been doing this for over a decade and I would never call myself an expert at this, right? Because I'm constantly, you can't. You're never going to get it done. You're always going to be learning and growing from your experience, especially as an artist. You know, you're going to you're going to keep pushing the boundaries. Um, and there are a lot of things I might be considered an expert in certain things, but there is always so much more growth in those areas. And there are other areas that I haven't even approached yet. So, like, you know what I mean? Like the whole expert thing is a moot point. Um, and I don't need to be an expert to put my story out there because it's the falling on my face that really interests me. You know, it's the falling on my face, picking myself up, dusting myself off and then continuing to go. That's those are the stories that always inspire me. Otherwise, the alternative is like reading the last page of a book without reading the book <laughs> or watching yeah. <laughs> watching the last 20 minutes of a movie without watching the movie or eating the frosting without the cake underneath it it's like did <laughs> you like somebody asked you like did you read that book it's like yes i read the last page where they totally like revel in the victory the last page was great <laughs> right there's no there it's like okay how did they get there like oh i oh, don't know yeah oh i don't know <laughs> Mary Flynn said, my favorite story is how I met this amazing artist uh, that became my mentor and encouraged me to move forward in my art career. That's awesome. That is awesome. Meeting people. Kathleen said, I just accepted a job that will be a totally new story. It's nerve wracking. Yes. And usually when you're heading in a new direction, right, with your story, where like the plot thickens. <laughs> plot twist, as Tish likes to yeah. say. Yeah, plot twist. Uh Shroy says the process to success, success. Yeah, the process to success. 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. However many. It usually takes a lot longer. What everybody else sees is the overnight success. Like, oh, oh, this this is a new person that just popped out of the, new, the woodwork. And it doesn't have to be these grandiose things. I follow a poet. I'm subscribed to a poet here in our county. And, like, he shares his poetry every Friday. And a little bit of personal philosophy. 
and a little plug for his poetry book at the end. And I'm like, little by little, I feel like I'm getting to know this dude and how his mind works. And I enjoy the poetry. And like, that's all I want. I stay subscribed. I like it. <laughs> yeah. And it's sometimes about struggles and, and philosophy, personal philosophy that grows out of adversity. I mean, that's one of the things that's super interesting is seeing the world through someone else's eyes. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and usually you really get to know someone when you see how it is that they handle adversity. They say you truly know someone when, like, the shit hits the fan. Yeah, when the shit how, hits. How they treat people, how they handle the stress. Yep. And you get to know yourself. You get to know yourself and you get to really challenge yourself. I think that that's... That's the really cool thing about the story. And it's understanding that as an artist, right, as a creative, like that is taking this approach to something that not too many people do. This is a very unique and original story that really embraces that hero's journey of facing obstacles and pushing forward, you know, like facing the fire versus like avoiding it, running away, flailing your arms like as artists, we're the ones out there that are like, you know, I, I think about stories like the story of the Phoenix and like, you know, for a lot of us, for me in particular, that story relates to me. I was in corporate. I was living a normal life. I was doing all these normal things and like I was miserable. And then I kind of like set fire to my old life and then became what I am now. I was essentially reborn as something else by by doing that by tearing down the walls that there were there so like it's not just like oh i decided to you know i decided i was going to be an artist and then you know did this thing it's like there was a lot of emotional struggles involved with doing this thing for the first time let's talk about levels of depth and seriousness because your overarching narrative can be hugely engaging and really like big and very deep at times but also, I feel like also in your micro narratives and your overarching story, like also not feeling locked into that, like you, you're naturally like your story's going to have depth to it. But micro stories, micro anecdotes that are just lighthearted and fun, like our Ave, who's one of our resident rogue ceramics artists, um, had a post where she was just um, throwing pottery that didn't work out into this tub and it was breaking and she was like wee <laughs> wee yeah. and it was fun and cute and it was like letting go of this stuff and from that moment on I was like oh I love this human yeah that's all it was or like I think of the story and I'm gonna do a terrible job of reiterating the story but you were following a twitter thread of a guy whose dad accidentally ordered like a truckload of something. Rice. When it was supposed to be like a pallet of rice, but it was like an entire it freighter. Was, it was supposed to be it was supposed to be a two bags of rice and they ended up ordering two pallets, two full on pallets In of a, rice. So this semi truck shows up and the guy is posting the saga to Twitter in real time as it's happening. As so. he's watching it happen with his family and the back and forth. And, and his dad arguing with the truck driver and then the mom getting involved. And then like they take a break because it's heated. So everyone walks away. And then there were probably thousands of people on Twitter following this immediately, thread. Immediately. Immediately. <laughs> and it's all it is is that the father ordered the wrong amount, the truck driver came and then was like, what are we supposed to do? And like a back and forth thing. And everybody was just fat. Thousands of people tuned in to see, well, what's going to happen next? And people were on there like, I can't, I can't take the anticipation. Like, where yeah. are you? What's happening with yeah. this rice delivery? And that's how it is when it comes to being an artist. Like, it's like, <laughs> A lot of our collectors, especially from the beginning, that's one of the, the most common things. It's like, I've really, really enjoyed following your story. Mm -hmm. You know, I was there with you from the beginning and seeing how much you've grown and everything that you've done. And they're still on the edge of their seat to see like, what's next? What's going to happen next? And that's the thing. Like, I enjoy it. We enjoy our story. I'm like, what's going to happen next as well? Because I don't know. Like, you know, I have ideas of like, I want to, I want to do these things or I want to do this with my art. I don't know if it's possible, but I'm going to see what I could do about making it happen. And how long do I need to persist in order to get there? 
And I think that that's, that's the thing that's so inspiring and fascinating about artists who are approaching the thing. So, like, your story is already there. You just got to be honest with yourself and open enough to just tell it. Just tell that story. Tell that story. Valerie said, and I resonate with this, and I want to discuss this for a little bit. I always struggle with my story. I definitely have a story, but for some reason I feel so awkward about sharing it, and I don't know why because I don't feel that way about others sharing stories. I totally get you, Valerie, and I feel the same way. I feel like, in fact, I shared on social media one day, like, I feel awkward posting. I feel like I'm being annoying or posting too often or like I'm boring or like nobody wants to hear whatever. So it does feel awkward. And I think perhaps one aspect of that is just breaking yourself of those feelings by establishing the habit of sharing. But the other is absolutely 100% like the emotional aspect of it. And understanding that you don't feel that way about other people's stories is part of that, yeah. right? I, I don't feel that way about other people's stories too, but I still feel awkward sharing mine and reminding myself like anybody who is going to think like you're so boring and I'm so annoyed by your posts, like it's better that they unfollow me, <laughs> right? Exactly. Because I'm just sharing my story and a lot of people do want to hear that story. So I think it's also okay being neutral about it like it's important to be neutral about it because like you the only thing that you have control over is how you feel about the story that you're releasing and understanding that like if you're feeling insecurity and stuff oh great there's there's a story there's something that you get to approach within yourself like why do i feel like i'm being annoying you mm -hmm. know why do i feel like my story doesn't matter compared to someone else anybody else could tell their story and so, like, it's it's personal growth that happens there and facing those fears and those, you know, Valerie, we still deal with that in several different levels. But also, it's like, that's part of it. That's part of that growth. That's part of that story of, like, you know, I think about what, you know, the story of when we first started. Barely being able to say hello to somebody that was walking into our space. Mm-hmm. And comparatively, the journey that we took to get to a place where we're comfortable talking to anybody, but still complete introverts when it comes to other situations. And I and I feel like those those are the things those are the things that really inspire people, because it was stories of that of people facing those fears that really inspired me to know, wait a second, I'm not locked into being an introvert. I'm on a sliding scale here. Mm -hmm. I, I but I need to control my fear and let's not let's investigate the reasons why Klee couldn't say hi right yeah. not just leave it at that i couldn't say hi not because i couldn't get the words out i couldn't say hi because i didn't want to burden someone with the idea that now they must look at my jewelry because i have engaged them yeah. in some way and understanding like well is my motive simply to say hi or is my motive to make them look at my right. jewelry oh my motive is actually just to say hi like, honestly, a part of me doesn't even want them to look at my jewelry because I'm a noob, right? So I just want to say hi. So, okay, we've dealt with motive, right? So then do I really feel bad saying hi? No. And if that person interprets my hello as coercion to make them look at my jewelry, then that's on them. Exactly. Exactly. Right? That's on them. You cannot control what somebody else is going to think of you. And, and I've gone through that too, right? I say hello. They say, I'm just looking. I say, groovy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just here. But it's only through experience that you really start to face that and really figure that out, right? Mm -hmm. Like I said, a lot of times we avoid doing something because we're afraid that we don't have it in us to do it. Well, whenever there is something new that comes up, and one of the reasons that I'm so intrigued by these stories and by like the way that we face fears and and I love sharing our story is because the only way I know that the only way that I'm going to be able to face a thing is by facing the thing and quite possibly falling on my face and getting it wrong until I get it right. You know what I mean? Like you have to do the thing. What is it that you say that is perfect? Doing the thing is the therapy for fear of doing the thing. Exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah. Um, Inert Flow said, my AC went out yesterday and I live in the south and it's 93 inside with the windows open. I could go in the AC in our shop, but I wanted to listen to you two while I tidy up my oh, studio. Oh, thank you, Inert Flow. Who knows? Maybe the heat will help with a poor painting and it'll be a piece I did the day I had no AC. Lol, it should be fixed tomorrow. Uh, well, that's a great story. Uh, you know, that's like the mini plot. In the in in your overarching story, it's like, well, this one is called No AC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And good perspective. We had a couple of occurrences where the AC went out either post hurricane, no power or some other random power outage where we were Rafi and I were working in the studio in Florida with no air conditioning. And I pretended in those times that I was an old world blacksmith <laughs> in with my the hammer. shop. Kink. Hammer forging Ooh, some stuff sweating. with sweat pouring yep. off my face. And I was like, I am in character. And like these pieces are going to be epic. I know. I thought about Picasso when he was in his tiny little apartment sweating, you know, uh -huh. painting furiously and stuff. So like I just got into character and was like, all right, well, it's hot in here anyway. So I might as well make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jenny said, I have so many stories, not many having to do with art, though. I've waited my whole life to reach my dad's story level. That's amazing. Jenny, you are quite a storyteller, and I love it. And I love your stories that have to do with life mm -hmm. or art. And also, let's address this. So many of the artists that we encounter feel like they need to keep their lives and their art lives separated, especially on social media, that they're only allowed to talk about their art and not anything else. That's impossible. And that was a bad habit that I feel like we were trained into several years ago in social media that I personally and people, you know, you're welcome to disagree with me, anyone out there, but I think as part of the whole person approach, it's not just about the art. It's certainly not just about the art. It's about the person behind the art and it's about the stories that don't necessarily directly relate to the art or maybe don't even relate to the art whatsoever. But your life journey is always intertwined with the art you create. So any story is it fits. It's yeah. there. It's part of who you are. And so I love hearing people's stories that aren't directly related to their work well, also not directly related to their work on the surface because but every work that you create is something but it's really tied in, yeah. the reality is that people buy art from people that they like uh-huh plain and simple plain and simple and when you're telling your stories and especially if you are the kind of person that has a sense of humor about life mm -hmm. you know because really we have to have a sense of humor about life um and you're sharing your stories the the I would say that the biggest issue is that we make the association that sharing your story means that you're bitching and moaning about life because for some reason, people that really bitch and moan a lot. They get a lot of attention. They get a lot of attention, but also they're the ones that are willing to share the stories. They have the no most. qualms with holding the bullhorn for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like, that's, if you are, if you have a story to tell, then just tell it. And realize that, like, you know what? I could tell this story however it is that I want. It's kind of like the difference between, you know, us saying, like, oh, we went to the grocery store versus saying, like, we went on this adventure. To procure the necessary components for, for an epic, epic feast. feast. Yeah, you know, and it's like you're the storyteller of your life. And either you're looking at your life like it's just this humdrum, boring thing, and that's how you tell it, or... You change your perspective and look at your life as this epic thing that it is. You know what I mean? You're the only one out there that is like you experiencing the life that you are experiencing. It, it, is, it is an epic story. You could go outside and water your plants in the morning and that's an epic story. And that's, that's mm -hmm. the thing. It's like our embracing of life, love, pursuit of happiness, creativity, all that stuff is part of our story. Nick said it's becoming popular on social media that people tell their hard luck yes. stories when they're clearly trying to sell their wares. You can tell an interesting story without telling tall tales. Exactly. Agreed. Exactly, Nick. Exactly. Yeah, and you can put a flair on it, a flair that's all your own without it being false. Yeah. Right? Because 
you already have a flair, whatever your personality is. However, whether you have like, you know, if you're like the dry sense of humor type or if you're the flourishes type, however you tell that story, only you have the story and only you can tell the story in the way. It's, so it's always going to be your unique flair. In her flow said about the AC being a tapping into the plain air, painting stamina. Woo! And yes, the water bottle is always nearby. That is great. <laughs> Valerie said you definitely hit the nail on the head. Awesome, Valerie. Kathleen said Voyager. Yes. Yes. Fear exists for one purpose. To, to be, be conquered. conquered. You guys, just as an aside, Star Trek is so chock full of excellent philosophy that it, you could spend years like <laughs> just discussing philosophical things I can tell from you, Star Trek. I can tell you right now, every morning we, you know, we sit down, we have our coffee, we start talking about life and like, okay, you know, which, which way do we want to progress and who we are inside and how we're feeling and all that stuff. And Klee will pull out all the Star Trek analogies Every single, it's kind of like the Vulcans and, or, you know. <laughs> and how it's not attain enlightenment and one and done and how it's always a daily practice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, S- Star Trek to me is hugely, re- and it it's always <laughs> like, what a, there's always a very relevant, poignant thing in whatever episode we're watching on any given yep. <laughs> evening that's relevant to my life. Artist Haven said, my art story changes about every three years, it seems. The art story, I mean, you've got, you've got, the thing is identifying the overarching story, right? Because there is an overarching story. And then you've got all the plots. It's kind of like the chapters in the book. Each chapter has its beginning, middle, and end. And everything is written. Now, we're part of a book that only ends when, you know, we become, uh, you know, worm food or whatever. But, like, even then it doesn't end, right? Because then there is the legacy that's left and other people are continuing the series and picking up where you might have left off because they were inspired by your story. And that's that's the thing, man. It's like we are so powerful as artists as creatives as people that are willing to buck the system and go in our own direction and head on our own path that is hugely inspiring to a lot of people out there that are not satisfied with the way that things are you know that that want more out of life and that's the ability that we have whether you have a a, a, you know a corporate side hustle or you're doing your art full-time doesn't matter the fact is that you are not just falling into the same grain that is expected of most of us you know like grow up go to school graduate get a good job you know so you can pay off the school so you could pay off the school loans and you know end up needing a car so you could drive to the job to pay for the house that you're never in because you're always at work trying to pay the house off you know like that kind of stuff like we buck that system and that is hugely inspiring in every single way it always frustrates me when an artist will say well i don't have a story you know and a lot of them it's funny because there is this theme that happens well i don't have a story i just want to sell my art and i remember one artist in particular was getting really upset with me and i was like okay so you you work on old cars, right? So like you do this stuff, you love doing like old muscle cars. Those are the paintings that you do. You did these beautiful, gorgeous paintings of like these old cars. I was like, A, that's a niche, right? So like there are car clubs and different things. People collect these kind of works, right? So mm-hmm. like you you have a niche there. You get you get to actually approach groups of people that this is what they like, right? But you're so, so wrapped up in the idea that you don't have a story that you're not even approaching these people. You're not putting it out there. You're not telling your story. Why do you like, I just do. But why? It doesn't happen. Like, why is it that you want to paint these cars, right? And that you invest so much time and energy into doing this craft. And I don't. There's a reason. There's a reason for that. Why don't you just dig a little bit deeper and see why? And he's like, no, I I just like doing it. I don't have any story. And I'm like, it is people that are not willing to look a little bit deeper within themselves and see what is it that motivates me? Why is it that I'm doing this? Who are my kind of people? What do I want to put it? Why do I want to put this out in the world that they don't look deeper? 
They don't know their story. They don't tell their story. And they don't have an understanding of why they're not selling their art. They've got nothing, nothing to share. Just pictures of a car. I could go out to the street and take a photograph of a bunch of cars. What is the reason that I'm going to buy this from you? Why do you do this? Who are you? What is your story? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the motivation here underneath? And refusing to share that story not only does a disservice to your potential collector and your artwork, but yourself. Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you treat yourself as a two-dimensional character in your own book? <laughs> that's the thing. I think that that's the thing that frustrates me. You hit the nail on the head. It's like you're looking at yourself like you're just two-dimensional. Like you're, oh, a, I don't know. you're a side I, I guy. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, and it, it's obviously that was a little bit of a rant there because it just frustrated me because this guy, beautiful artwork, wasn't willing to take a look inside and then he quit. He quit because it was too hard. Mm -hmm. And I, I always get really upset when I see someone do that to themselves. It's like, you're not willing to just, just look deeper. The whole reason we're doing this art thing out there gives a it gives us the opportunity to dig deep and really look at what is it that I need to do to keep going am I willing to really take a look at my my fears my anxiety my stuff am I really willing to face those things and just keep moving am I willing to proclaim to the world I am an artist this is who I am I am here damn it or like are you just like throwing pictures out there and saying like hopefully it sells you know and i'm like oh it just it, it does fr frustrate me it's kind of funny in a way when you think about it because creating art and putting it out there is like a huge act of vulnerability it has everything to do with emotion and the idea that you would then try to pretend like it's not or like you're not or like you don't have any feelings about it i'm like you're not fooling me because like i live this life and i know how vulnerable and emotional it can be. Like, stop trying to pretend like it's not like that. Because it you is. Know? <laughs> it is like that. You're not fooling anyone. Like, you're you're committing acts of vulnerability and bravery every day. Quit trying to pretend like it's, like, whatever. Because <laughs> it's not. It's not <laughs> it's like cool. that. I'm cool. Like, no big deal. We're artists. You know, like, we basically willingly put ourselves in the crosshairs. We're like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this thing and put it out there. Where A, it's going to get rejected. B, it might get misunderstood. C, people are going to question my every step because they're going to think that I'm an idiot because, you know, as an artist, you can't make a living. You can't blah, 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 blah. Basically, I'm, I'm going to have people that are completely unsupportive. I'm going to have naysayers. I'm going to have to deal with all this stuff when I decide to put it out there. And not only am I going to deal with all this stuff, but I need to be able to overcome this stuff and come out ahead, rise above the noise. You know what I mean? Like, wow, what a freaking spiritual journey is that? Mm -hmm. That is like beyond anything. That's like, you know, comic book hero stuff. And I'm like, that is an amazing story. And that's what we're doing every single day. Every single day. I am most inspired by artists, entrepreneurs, musicians, creative people, people that are putting themselves out there and pushing, and not the ones that are like, hustle, 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 blah, 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 you know, and like stuff like that. I'm like, I am inspired by the people that fall on their face, pick themselves up and keep going. Because really, you want to know the definition of success? That is the willingness to fall on your face, pick yourself up, keep going and smile, even if you have mud in your teeth. You know, that's that's as far as I am concerned with my life and the way that I've lived it. That's the definition of success to me. Um, Clover, I... Clover said, I'm I currently don't have a stove, so I had to get pretty creative with food lately as well. They won't be out to even look at it until next Friday. Awesome. I love it. See, and that's that's an adventure. Yes. That's why when we did the, we have the video of the hurricane. And blowtorch dinners and blowtorch blow torch coffee. Coffee, blowtorch mm -hmm. dinners. What an adventure we had. Also, congratulations on getting your name legally changed to Clover. That is 
awesome. Congrats, Clover. Uh, and Clover also said, the stove is okay. I ordered a one burner. It'll be here Thursday. And I already have a small oven, so isn't too bad. Awesome. Awesome. Artist Haven said, I keep my personal socials and my business socials separate, but still share my art on both. I need to have a line because people have no respect for personal space. In my honest opinion, long story. And that's your prerogative. That's your prerogative. Right? That's based on your experience. I mean, and that's, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, we have our stuff. The thing is, for me, I'm like, I don't know the difference between personal and business. Because to me, it's, it's all, all intertwined. It's all, it's all yeah. personal. My business and stuff is personal. Some people have a line drawn. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. You know, because it, that's up to you. Um, for me, it's like, it's all out there. Because, you know, I just don't, I don't have anything personal that I wouldn't share yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just it's just kind of out there because my artwork is the most personal thing, to be honest with you, that I could share. Acts um, of vulnerability and bravery. Yeah. Daily. So, but that being said, you know, you that's... You have to do what's some people Some people do have that line drawn and that's, you know, that's what you do. You you set up that line and, and you do it however it's most comfortable for you. Definitely. Clover said, um, as long as you speak your truth, that's all you can control. If they think that about your story, then they aren't your people. Exactly. 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 Leslie said, going back to ancient stories and philosophers, loving meditations by Marcus Aurelius, our stories have a golden thread of humanity that is timeless. Oh, beautiful. And I said, love that. Leslie. And that resonates with me. And I would say that for me, my personal truth is that stories are one of the most important things that humans have to offer. Maybe the most important are shared knowledge and experiences and the willingness to share those. Very, like, very important. Yeah. <laughs> and it is a golden thread that ties time and space together, essentially. Exactly. Valerie said, yes, I never want to be the slimy, fake storyteller. I, I'm always afraid I'll look like that. Don't be afraid to look like that. Um, you know, it gives you, every time you tell your story, it gives you the opportunity to take a look and see, like, is there a motive behind this? And really, mm -hmm. that's the thing that we always take a look at, like, Am I filming this and putting a video out there and do I have like a secret motive for putting it out there or am I being honest about my intentions, you know? And that's the thing, like I will, when it comes to selling my book, I will talk about my book, I will talk about a subject and I will always tell people, buy my book. You know, I want you to buy my book. No thinly this, veiled promotion. No, this podcast just... right now, go out and buy The Rogue Artist Survival Guide and all the other books by Rafi Perez if you haven't read them. There's some really good stuff in there. There's really good stuff in there. I'm telling you, you won't regret it despite the the one naysayer that was on our... Well, yeah. haters gonna hate. Haters but gonna especially hate. <laughs> if you like this podcast, there's a pretty solid chance that you'll like the books yeah. as well. Ginny said, a story... Today I was carving soapstone and I didn't realize that a little chunk flew off and I went to drink my coffee and the <laughs> chunk went into my mouth and I panicked because I thought my tooth <laughs> fell out. <laughs> oh, those, those little life moments. I mean, the struggle. I love them. When it comes to art, the struggle is real. For real. <laughs> Definitely. Susan said, maybe that guy, I'm guessing she means the guy with the, car the artwork, guy? the car guy. Maybe that guy looked at what he was doing and found he needed to change, do something else, and maybe found his life path. Also on one's life path, do not quit. You know, yeah. that's a good perspective. That maybe, is a very good. Thank you, Susan, for yeah, sharing that. Maybe he wasn't fully into doing cars and just doing them because he thought it was lucrative and maybe you pushed him over the edge into like living his best life you know that's a good way of seeing it i like that way of seeing it better than my way because my way is like did you quit yeah Don't quit. yeah so leah said change is always good and i'm always doing it because i'm always learning from what i've already done exactly we can't help but change and evolve and sometimes we don't realize that we're resisting it until it becomes very painful because it is painful for us when we resist and stagnate. I think that that's one of the reasons that like, you know, you guys, when, when it comes to like social media, 
Um, and I know that a lot of people struggle with social media and like the whole the whatever. Well, it's a lo- it's a big thing to it, unpack. It is it is a big thing to unpack. But I I think the reason that I don't really struggle with it is because, you know, I post something that I want to remember that is part of my story, right? And that's really at the end of it. Like, oh, I want to I want to remember this. I want to be able to look back and look at this, right? No matter how temporary social media is or whatever, whatever the platforms are doing. Mm -hmm. But while it's out there, why not? I want to, I want to take a look back and I want to remember this day that we're sitting out on a porch and we're figuring things out. And um, then I'll share it. And there are some people that will relate to it. Some people that just follow us and they'll be like, oh, this is beautiful. Or like, thank you so much for sharing this or whatever. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, that's great. And then every once in a while, there's a spam comment or something like that. And I just delete it. It, it, And I think that that's the thing. Like, I don't pay attention to bullshit. I don't have time to pay attention to bullshit. So, like, I delete and block anything. And I'm very consistent with that. Like, I delete and block You do stay on top of it. Because I don't have time for it. I'm not going to ignore it and be like, oh, I'll take care of it later. And then I have to deal with it later. Mm -hmm. So, like... I'm the kind of person that when bullshit and negativity come into my life, I basically squash it as soon as I can. You smite its ruin upon yeah, the mountainside. I don't have I don't have time for that. And I think that that's the thing. That's but that's part of my story. I don't want someone else's negativity to take away from what I'm sharing in the world. And I think it I think that that's one of the main reasons now I've, you know, over the years have gotten to that place. It wasn't always like that. Mhm. But I think it's one of the reasons that I don't struggle with social media. Like, I don't care. There's, there's a lot of ass hats out in the world, and, but there are way more amazing, awesome people. Amaze hats? Yeah, amaze hats. There's a way more amaze hats than there are ass hats in the world. True. Virginia said, I burnt my little sculptures in my oven, but I'm painting them while I watch and listen to this podcast. The burning of the sculptures is Is the story it is. <laughs> And they have survived. They have survived. Another day to become a thing. To become a thing. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, I think that we're at the end of the podcast. I think that, is there anything else that you want to cover or talk about? How do you tell a story? You tell it one piece at a time. I don't think I can (laughs) sing. No, you can't sing that. (laughs) Johnny Cash is a huge source of wisdom for me as well. You tell it one piece at a time. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I mean, I think about Johnny Cash. <laughs> and that's the thing, you guys. Like, think about the stuff that you love and think about the um, artists behind it and why it is that you love that artist, right? I think about Johnny Cash and his life mm-hmm. and what he did. And, you know, he's the rebel, the man in black and, and stuff like that. And I love his music. And so much so, because I know the story, that when people, I've had people, not too many Actually, it was only one person that came up to him and was like, why do you listen to that kind of music? And I remember looking at that person and thinking to myself, you and I are not friends. We don't, I don't, I don't like you at all, right? Because I like Johnny Cash. (laughs) So, and that's how powerful that story is. And that's okay. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and like, it's interesting because that's the thing. We have... You know, for our art and jewelry, we have people that will go to bat and defend us to any naysayers that are out there. But that's not just because they love the art and jewelry, but it's because they love us because we put ourselves out there. I would say a huge percentage of them love the art and the jewelry because they love us first. Yeah. Not the other way around. Yeah, that is true. I mean, who was it? Clover is the one that said it. Yes, Clover had, had said the, one of the greatest things I ever heard in my life, and I'll never forget it, which is, your art is not what makes you interesting. You are what makes your art interesting. So excellent that it made it into one of the books. Exactly. Um, and I, I would have that tattooed on my person. On your, because for, it's on your that, forehead? Maybe not on my forehead. I'm just not a forehead tattoo kind of human. but I don't know. It'd be weird. <laughs> It'd be weird. It'd yeah. be weird. Um, but I just always, I, I will always keep that in the foreground of my brain jar. And it's true. Or the forehead. Mm-hmm. See, how, see what I did there? 
What if I just went out and just went <laughs> no, ahead No, don't it? do it. Don't do it. That'd you, be so you'd weird. You'd regard be, that. I would regard that. Mm -hmm. Troy said, I love Johnny Cash. That's right. And that's why you and I, Troy, friends. we're friends. <laughs> yeah. Valerie said, thank you so much. I needed this topic more than any other today. How do you guys always know <laughs> what I need to hear? Isn't that fun? The synchronicities that happen when you're just like, when you're amongst your people or Star Trek. And you're like, this is so relevant to me. Well, because Star Trek people are my people. That, that's true. That's true. <laughs> that is true. Well, um, thank you so much to all the rogues for being here. You guys, the, you guys are amazing. You make this so, so much fun. And we get to cover so many bases on just a single subject. Obviously, we didn't cover everything, but like we always make so much headway and just discuss so many awesome things. Good thing we don't cover everything or we would only have one podcast. Yeah, I know. I know. It would just end. <laughs> and uh, we've said it all. Good night and good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so Wendell said, I never understood Johnny Cash until I saw a film of a live performance he was absolutely electric i got it then gives yeah. me goosebumps yeah yeah clover said you're so kind it's just a conclusion i came to after talking with you and all the rogues yeah clover well you're awesome clover mm -hmm. so um but yeah thank you so much the rogues for being here and for anybody listening to this at home Thank you so much for listening to it, if you've listened up to this point. And if you like this and you'd like to listen to more of our podcast, go ahead and uh, click wherever it is that you need to click to follow, subscribe, whatever it is. We do one of these weekly, at least we try to, mm -hmm. every week. And yeah, and other than that, I think it is time to say goodbye. You want to say goodbye, Clee? Oh, well, good day then. Adios.